part one of our negotiation book, What is Negotiation? So we're going to have a basic introduction. It's very simple. What is the idea of negotiation? Now, of course, probably we all watch movies and TV shows and we see people negotiating and we get some idea about that. But probably the best way to see negotiation in action is to watch people negotiating every day at the market when you go shopping. Uh, if your mom or dad goes shopping at the fresh market, at the morning market, afternoon market, or the night market, you probably see bargaining in action all of the time. When people buy a car, they bargain. When people buy equipment for their house, they bargain. There's lots of things they bargain with. However, if you're a young student, probably you usually don't bargain very much when you buy things. You go out and you just purchase them from the store and the list price is the price you pay. So you maybe you don't have a lot of opportunity for bargaining or you think bargaining is an old-fashioned kind of thing. Well, that's not the case. Bargaining can be used today just as much as 20 years ago, 50 years ago, 100 years ago. It's just that at your age, maybe you're used to paying the list price. Well, later, when you learn about bargaining, maybe you'll develop some skills that will give you more confidence to bargain more, even on things that have a list price. Because when you bargain, you maximize your opportunities. You really can get a better deal. And if you don't, well, then you won't. But let's look at bargaining from another perspective. Maybe bargaining is not just about buying things and arguing or pushing for a lower price. Maybe we can talk about bargaining in a wider kind of perspective, and that is everyday bargaining. Not about price, but about other things. In the marketing department, we often talk about this idea of exchange. I do something for you, you do something for me. Of course, when you buy something, it's very straightforward, right? I pay a, an amount of money, and you give me a service or a product. So that's very straightforward. But it doesn't have to be that way. We could exchange other things. I could loan you my computer or give you a mouse that I don't use anymore, and in return, maybe you'll give me something like a small monitor or a keyboard or something like this, and that could be an exchange. So we would bargain about that. What is a good exchange? What makes sense for you and me? So in negotiation, if we look at it from this perspective of every day, it might not even involve things like that, but could involve behaviors, for example, what are we going to have for dinner tonight? We could actually bargain about that, couldn't we? I want to have spaghetti and you want to have uh, noodles uh, Chinese style. So there you go. We have a little bit of a conflict. What are we going to do? We can negotiate about it. And we could have a solution very easily by saying, well, tonight we'll have um, Chinese noodles and tomorrow we'll have Italian noodles. We'll have spaghetti. And that would be a solution. But we did bargain. So. In this chapter, we're going to look at bargaining from a couple perspectives. And in fact, throughout the whole book, we're going to be looking at bargaining from these two perspectives. One, an everyday kind of social bargaining to help you understand the ideas, to help you relate to the ideas. And then number two, a business perspective. So if we look at what is bargaining then, it's about satisfying needs, just like we were talking about I need to have dinner, you need to have dinner, how are we going to solve that problem? So negotiation is a way, a behavior that humans do in order to satisfy their needs. Now, in some cultures, they teach negotiation very clearly. It's something that people learn from even a young age. They see it in their parents or they're encouraged to do it. In other cultures, it may be discouraged. However, I want you to understand that it's not really a time thing. It's not like, oh, before people bargain, now we never bargain. That's not true at all. It really is a culturally relevant thing. So different things you can bargain for and different things you don't bargain for. I mean, for example, if I give you uh, a Chinese New Year, if your grandfather gives you a red envelope, you don't bargain, do you? You don't say, oh, by the way, this, this red envelope doesn't have enough money in it. Or, or your grandfather wouldn't say, I think this has too much, I'm going to cut it down. So those are things you don't bargain about. It's not culturally appropriate. So it really depends on the culture how much you bargain and how much you feel comfortable with it. However, I do want to say that 
It is something we use every day. Whether you know it or not, you're bargaining almost every day. Sometimes you may be bargaining in everyday kind of situations where to go for lunch, and some days you may be bargaining for something special, like once a semester you bargain with your professor over the grade you're going to get. They're all bargaining. So bargaining is something that we do often, and this is a form of negotiation. So in negotiation, we can use this in our families, in our everyday life, and of course in our business. Although some people say it's just arguing, bargaining, argu arguing, arguing, haggling, um, having a dispute, a disagreement. I guess we could see it that way. But in reality, negotiating is not arguing. It's a way to get to an end, to get to a conclusion that satisfies both parties. Now, when we say satisfies both parties, we don't mean both groups get everything they want. That's not the case. And we're going to talk about that in future chapters. In any case, what we're talking about here specifically is that somebody wants to get something or wants to not get something or avoid something. Right? You would like to avoid failing your class. You would like to uh, get a high grade. So you want to get something and or you want to avoid something. So maybe you want to drink coffee or you'd rather drink tea or something like this. It can be a very small thing. Or, for example, in the dialogue in this chapter, what if you have a family and the husband wants to go to vacation in Europe, but the children want to go to Disneyland or the wife wants to go to Disneyland? So that's a vacation issue. And I think we often have those kinds of situations. You have a family, you want to do something. Some people want to do A, some people want to do B. What do we do now? We're going to have to negotiate. It may look like arguing sometimes because we may have some conflict. But it, in the end, it's all the same. It's negotiating to get to an end that everyone can be satisfied with. Not necessarily everyone gets what they want or 100% of what they want. But for sure, you cannot have a situation where one side gets nothing they want. Because if that's true, they'll just walk away and they won't bargain at all. So we're going to talk about that in future chapters.